Hey guys, Andrew Marsh here with Drew Fit. Thank you for tuning in. Today, let's talk about overcoming feminist culture, and I'm going to be specifically talking about um, from a dietary standpoint. Now, this is a topic I'm pretty passionate about, and I think that the feminist culture is having a major impact, not just dietary, but also movies, television, video games, um, in the sports world, in politics. Everywhere you look, there's really going to be a feminist agenda being pushed. And I think it's not only impacting men by saying it's um, toxic masculinity, but I think it's also impacting females as well and really creating more separation. So I hope I can give you guys more clarification where I'm seeing this and the lens I'm seeing it through. Um, but today, again, I want to focus on a dietary standpoint. But before I jump into that, um, if you guys can please subscribe to my YouTube channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Drew underscore fit. That's D-R-U-E underscore F-I-T. And a lot of people like to message me um, pertaining to this topic. And I love hearing what you guys have to say because like I said, I think there's so many things to be looked at. Um, it really is eye-opening. So I love hearing from you guys. Um, but let's get on with the video. So today I'm specifically going to be talking about um, estrogen and its negative impacts, not just on men, but females as well. And I want to talk about how we can overcome the damaging effects of estrogen specifically. So some real tip of the iceberg type, type stuff. Now, I listen to a lot of experts um, like Georgie Dinkoff, Ray Pete, um, Matt Blackburn, and Danny Roddy are also great sources of inf information when it comes to these um, topic. So I highly suggest giving them a follow. So like I said, this is tip of the iceberg, but the way I see estrogen impacting both males and females. Now for females, um, a lot of people think that estrogen is a female hormone. I actually think it is more of a stress hormone because if it were to be elevated in a female, the thing that happens is that progesterone is no longer produced, which can lead to infertility issues and other illnesses and diseases further on down the road when their body is not able to produce progesterone. Now in males, um, it kind of, when you have elevated estrogen, what begins to tank is testosterone, which is naturally higher in men than it is women. So both sexes are being impacted through an overload of estrogen. And if you look at the standard American diet, or if you go out to eat, what you will notice is that a lot of the oils that they're cooking our foods in or the foods that they are preaching for us to eat or doing a crazy diet like a vegan diet um, or eating things like tofu, all of these things tend to lead to an increase in um, stress hormones, specifically estrogen. And this negatively impacts men. Um, you'll notice they gain fat in certain places like the lower abdominal um, region, uh, the lower back, and sometimes they can even get breasts or they call them man boobs or moobs, but this is directly correlated with the diet that they're eating and there's certain tips and tricks I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm not going to get too into the science of them, but they do help. Um, I've noticed a major increase um, just in my overall quality of life, better energy, um, stronger in the gym, better quality sleep. Uh, the list goes on and on, but I'll give you guys a brief understanding of where I'm coming from. So uh, one thing to understand about estrogen is an aromatase. Now I'm going to read the definition of aromatase. So aromatase is also called estrogen synthesis, or synthase, which is an enzyme responsible for a key step in the biosynthesis of estrogen. So um, aromatase essentially is the catalyst for estrogen um, that's going to impact the body. Um, estrogen, the by definition, estrogen is a category of a sex hormone responsible for the development and regulation of the female reproductive system and secondary sex characteristics. So before I start trashing on estrogen, I do want to say that estrogen is essential, but the thing that we're facing right now is elevated levels of estrogen. So that's what we have to keep in mind here. Uh, estrogen isn't 100% bad. It is useful in the right context. Now, what I want to be focusing about today um, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, is aromatase inhibitors. Now, aromatase inhibitor, by definition, are a class. Now, 
there are certain foods that act as aromatase inhibitors, but there all, are also drugs, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the definition. Aromatase inhibitors are a class of drugs used in the treatment of breast cancer in postmenopausal women, and now I'm going to butcher this word, gynecomastia in men. Uh, they may also be used off-label to reduce estrogen conversion when using external testosterone. Now, a lot of bodybuilders actually take a, uh, certain aromatase inhibitors. There's uh, quite a few of them out there. Um, I've never done it. I've never gotten into bodybuilding. But like I said, it does lower the estrogen in the body. And if you're a bodybuilder, that's obviously what you want. You want higher levels of testosterone and lower levels of estrogen. So you can get a really sharp cut physique with very low body fat percentage. Now moving on. Now here's a couple quotes I got from Ray Pete's website. And I will leave a link as well to this uh, publication that Ray has on his website. And it basically says estrogen is often considered the female hormone. However, whenever elevated in either men or women can have negative effects. It is more important for women to have an increase in progesterone, not estrogen. And that's what I found really interesting is today we're finding not just men, but females as well with elevated levels of estrogen. So when people say it is the female hormone, I think that's where you get thrown for a loop because if you're like, well, if it's elevated, I shouldn't have all these health problems. But in reality, it's progesterone. You want, you want an increase in not estrogen. Um, and here's another quote from that same publication that says, 60 years ago, progesterone was found to be the main hormone produced by the ovaries. And another one, in fact, it is the most protective hormone the body produces and the large amounts that are produced during pregnancy result from the developing baby's need for protection from the stressful environment. In experiments, progesterone was found to be the basic hormone of adaptation and of resistance to stress. The adrenal glands use it to produce the anti-stress hormones. And when there is enough progesterone, they don't have to produce the potentially harmful cortisol, another stress hormone. In a progesterone deficiency, we produce too much cortisol, and excessive cortisol causes osteoporosis, aging of the skin, damage to brain cells, and the accumulation of fat, especially in the back and abdomen. Experiments have shown that progesterone relieves anxiety, improves memory, protects brain cells, and even prevents epileptic seizures. Excess stress, which can block progesterone synthesis and elevate estrogen, may bring on symptoms in someone who never had them. So that is very interesting information on uh, the topic of estrogen and progesterone. Now, progesterone isn't something you just want to uh, take every day and expect it to be your savior. You want your body to be able to produce progesterone naturally, and you achieve this by increasing your metabolism and beginning to lower estrogen levels in your body. And this is what I'm going to get into is uh, the aromatase inhibitors that do block elevated levels of estrogen. They're really an estrogen antagonist. Now, before I get into the aromatase inhibitors that I personally use on a daily basis or if not every other day, I want to make it very clear that you must be attacking this from a foundational process. You can't just do these four things or four or five things that I'm going to talk about on a daily basis and expect everything to be A-OK. -okay. You have to um, eat a healthy diet. You have to eat frequently. You can't skip meals and do these crazy fasting protocols. Um, you want to eat a diet that's going to be high in protein, um, getting red meat, gelatin, collagen, good sources of carbohydrates, milk, fruit that is easily digestible. Um, oranges are great, a uh, great source for that. And you also want to be good eating good fats as well, uh, saturated fats specifically. And there's also things you want to avoid, um, specifically PUFA consumption, polyunsaturated fatty acid. And if you eat out, chances are your food is probably cooked in this oil. So try cooking at home as much as possible. Um, other things to avoid, life stress in general, whether it's social, physical, environmental, you obviously want to lower stress. Um, and then three, like I said, um, Avoid fasting or elimination diets, at least when you're trying to get your health back. If you're healthy, um, you have a good metabolism, your digestion's really good, um, then sure, maybe play with fasting, but I don't think it's going to help you in the long run. Actually, I think it's going to negatively impact you. 
So now to the fun part, I'm not going to talk about what each of these things do specifically, but you should know that they are all aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors act as estrogen antagonists. They will lower estrogen or um, they can eliminate endotoxin, which in turn can lower things like estrogen and cortisol and other stress hormones. So the top five things that I do personally to avoid elevated estrogen, number one, orange juice is fantastic. Now, if you're if you've been following my channel, you know that I've had a change in my diet over the past year, and I'm still, I wouldn't even call it a diet, it's just a way of eating. Um, it's not a crazy elimination diet or anything like that, um, but I do um, incorporate a lot of sugary foods, orange, orange juice being one of those things, or I eat oranges on a daily basis. Um, that's a great aromatase inhibitor. Um, two, you can supplement progesterone. There's a product called Progest E, but again, you're not going to rely on this product to save you um, in the long run. Um, but is it, it is a very good product, and I'll leave a link for that as well. Um, number three, this is very controversial as well as uh, the sugar topic, um, but tobacco is another great aromatase inhibitor. Um, I prefer it over um, marijuana usage. Marijuana actually has been shown to increase and elevate estrogen and other, other stress hormones. Um, and since uh, incorporating tobacco uh, the past few months, I've noticed a major um, benefit to my health, whether it's my mental health, digestion, I've noticed it's gotten better. And I notice that I'm more zen or calm in the moment when I'm smoking tobacco. And uh, be forewarned, you don't want to jump in um, smoking a lot of tobacco right off the bat. You want to ease into it, start very slow, um, never smoke on an empty stomach. Um, and then sources of tobacco. Now this, the, the reason why you want tobacco is because of the nicotine. Nicotine has a lot of benefits. Um, so you can get it through the gum, um, the nicotine gum. I haven't tried it, but I know Ben Greenfield used to promote um, a certain nicotine gum that didn't have a lot of crap and filler in it. Um, I haven't tried it, but I do smoke cigars probably once a day or every other day. Um, or you can do pipe tobacco. But try to make sure you're getting quality tobacco because a lot of that is um, pretty bad uh, sprayed with chemicals. Um, and also, don't smoke cigarettes. I think cigarettes just have a very small amount of tobacco, and it's loaded with hundreds of other chemicals. I do not recommend cigarettes at all. Um, number four is aspirin. I take aspirin every single night. It's it's a great aromatase inhibitor. I take about three to five 325 milligram capsules every night. I mix it in with water and drink it about a half hour before bed. Um, and number four, now I don't know if it's considered an aromatase inhibitor, but eating a raw carrot um, every day, maybe two raw carrots every day, um, lowers endotoxin in your digestive system and it takes it out through the digestive process. Um, and by lowering endotoxin, you're actually decreasing the levels of estrogen in your body. Now, um, it has to be a full length carrot. It can't be like the chopped up ones that are soaked in bleach, the baby carrots. You won't get as good of benefit when doing that. Um, or you can do the Ray Peat carrot salad. I think that's the most enjoyable way. Um, but eating a raw carrot does the same thing. I just skin off the edges to get all the junk off of it and eat it whole before a meal. Um, and that seems to work well. So those are all the tips I have for you guys. Um, like I said, this is going to be about a four or five part series. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this topic, thinking I'm being a little overboard, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts below. Or you could also follow me on Instagram at Drew underscore fit. So thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.